I had a whole stomach, like actual. So I mean, it was a whole thing. Like either wear sports bras or no bras. Don't tell my doctor. She shaved my hip bones, girl. But there's some parts <laughs> when she's injecting Jay. <laughs> Chef's kiss, girl. Let's talk about it because. <laughs> we've been living okay if you haven't already watch my playlist on my surgery that i did we're now at seven months but still i'm gonna title this six months because people normally look forward to six month surgery updates okay i did that back in december 2022 and honey was it a time like when i i don't even believe i can look back at those videos just not now because i know i shared a lot it was very graphic right trigger warning right now letting you know i tried to share as much as i could that was allowed on youtube because i feel like it's very important if you are considering this kind of a surgery that you have as much information as possible. So if you don't already know, I got an abdominoplasty, which is a tummy tuck. I got 360 liposuction around my abdomen and then I got a breast lift, okay? But yeah, watch that playlist series to just follow me through everything in the beginning. It was quite an experience. A few updates because I'm still in my healing process. Like I'm literally still in post-op, although I feel stupendous. But there's just something that I did not realize would still be a, a, a thing right now that I did not see much information on. So let's talk about it. My stomach is still tight, like not tight like it used to be, obviously, right? The top of my stomach is a lot softer. It actually looks poochy, poofy. That's where the swelling shows the most. And I have to even get used to that because I thought that my whole abdomen would be flat. No, it's more so belly button down. If you've seen me on social since then, which I'm not shy about, you'll see when I wear, let's say, a pair of gym shorts and a sports bra, you will see a pooch. And I'll mention it because I started to notice it on other people. I noticed that poochy area on people who are much slimmer than me. And my doctor told me that that was an area that they cannot liposuction very aggressively because of something that has to do with the nerves. I don't know. I can't quite explain it in the way that she can, but I now notice it. And I won't lie, it makes me feel better because I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this is normal. Because before I had a stomach, okay? I had a whole stomach, like actual. So it was a whole thing. What I related to when it came to other people is very different than what I relate with them about now. So when I see people at the gym, just in general on social, and I'm like, oh yeah, all right, it is normal. So I feel a lot better. That's why I share so much because the more we see that, re that we relate to in other people, then I believe, at least in my experience, it makes us feel more comfortable because we're like, okay, it's not just me you feel what I'm saying so my stomach is definitely still tight toward the lower part of my body I do ab workouts I'll get to that right but with that said even not even if I stretch right like I'm stretching right now it's not at the top that feels tight it's more the bottom you know it's weird because I miss how I felt real tight months ago because it made me remember and just it made me more conscious of my stomach which made me more just more conscious when eating that didn't come out right what I mean is for instance and I would wear the skims bodysuit which was tight right when you eat a lot first of all I had the surgery then you're wearing a tight garment or a tight bodysuit it's hard to overfill yourself you feel what I'm saying so now I don't wear the garment like I used to because my doctor said I don't have to I only wear it once in a while like on airplanes like that but I don't wear it like you can just forget about that but the looser the stomach gets as I'm healing the more I feel like I can fit into my stomach when I'm eating you get what I'm saying so it's giving I'm eating too much not necessarily because in general I'm eating a lot less but it, it feels like I'm eating more than I was six months ago like five months ago four months ago because my stomach doesn't feel as tight that's what I'm trying to say it's still tight but it's definitely not as tight as it used to feel okay so that does feel like odd like I probably sit here and I'm like it literally feels like I'm squeezing in my abs and I'm not I'm just sitting here but it just feels tight you know what I'm saying My core is a lot stronger. Girl, come and see me do ab workouts. If you've seen my TikTok, my reels, my YouTube vlogs, then you know that I work out. Like, I'm, what? Excuse me. My results are not just from the surgery. Again, watch my surgery playlist. They're not just from the surgery. In my opinion, and which is what I did, you need to get in the gym, okay? This is not something you just do and you go find somewhere to sit down. If you want to, then that's your prerogative. That's not what I did. So if you're wanting results that look like mine, we're all different, but if you wanna know what I did, diet and exercise and the surgery, praise the Lord. My abs are so so strong and it makes me so happy. The way that I can hold myself like on my uh, tailbone, if I'm doing an ab workout, oh, I, like an ab plank, you know, where you're on your tailbone and your back is up and your legs are up and you're just sitting. 
I could never do that before. Now, I wasn't in as best of a shape. I'm in better shape now, but I also have my core sutured together, so it just is better, like it just holds better. And of course, I have been doing core workouts, so my core in general is stronger. It just feels good to know that, wow. I have abdominal muscles that are actually working. So they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. And I just feel better when I do my workouts, whether it's planks or sit-ups or whatever the case is, I just feel stronger, you know what I'm saying? I remember I was in uh, Turks and Caicos and I thought about doing, is it paddle boarding where you stand? And I'm like, I know that that requires an ab, like abs, it requires you to use your core. And I'm like, I could do that because my core is so much stronger now. Whereas before it was weak and I'm not sure if it was because of the diastasis or because I wasn't fit I don't really know it could have been both you know but your girl is definitely in a better place and I am so freaking ecstatic about it Honey, I got some new stretch marks on the hips and I know it came from the surgery. Now, I never had stretch marks until having a baby and when I got them, honestly, I was just so happy to be a mom that I was like, if the stretch marks are the rite of passage, then it just is what it is, you feel me? I didn't have tremendous amount of stretch marks. Even now, you really don't see them just on my hips, but there are more. There are new ones that I don't mind sharing when I share myself in a bikini or getting ready or what have you. There are new ones. The line that's cut to do the tummy tuck, right? Think of a line like this. You have to then take the skin and put it together and then suture it, right? So it's not only the skin from the stomach being pulled down, but I didn't realize that it, this part is being pulled up. <laughs> Yeah, I saw some new stretch marks and I was like, excuse me, what are you doing here? But it ain't that, it ain't that crucial to me. They're very light and slim, you know? It's not those dark ones that can happen and like, thank God it's not that. Mine are light and like, like little squiggles. So I was like, what? Why do I have these new stretch marks? But they're there. They're there. And as my swelling is going down and as I'm toning and, and losing more body fat and just reconfiguring myself, I can see how much more lean my hips are. Cause I told you in a different video, she shaved my hip bones. Girl, shaving the fat off my hip bones. You did me justice, Dr. Sato. You didn't have to, you didn't have to, because we didn't discuss that. We didn't discuss that. So while I was healing, I was like, why? I feel like I can feel my bone. It feels so strange. And I'll catch them. It's a, I shaved it on purpose because it looks sexy. I said, that's how you do it. Take initiative now. Ah, mm. I was like, you better go ahead and do me, I do you. I love it, okay? So in that area, there's not a lot of fat. It just, it just looks so good when the muscle is the, the defining with the workouts and stuff. Chef's kiss. Now I do have some keloids, honey, and I was not expecting that. Now when I look back, I got this pierced ages ago and I took it out because it never healed. And there's scar tissue that I can feel even now, right? It's not a keloid, but I remember being like, dang, why didn't this ever heal? Okay, well, uh, I got keloids or whatever. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm okay with it because it's better than what I looked like before. You see, I look at the glass half full and not half empty, and I recognize that this is cosmetic surgery. So there are things that are bound to go left or right. Things aren't gonna be exactly perfect in the beginning. It was just like pregnancy. Oh, I don't have my stretch marks, so it's not good. And then you get to the end and you're like, ah, it looks like somebody just scratched you, you feel me? It was like that. I didn't have that in the beginning. And then I started to be like, ooh, I'm real itchy. And it's like, ooh, what are these bumps, you feel me? So I have keloids around the areola which is literally cut and paste because they literally cut and paste the areola where it has to go, you know? I don't have a keloid down the anchor scar that I have, praise God. I do have a keloid under the breast, both of them. The scars in general are freaking itchy. Okay, we'll get to that. So I have the keloid underneath, and then I have a keloid in some parts of my abdomen or lower abdomen scar. And then I have the keloid, I'm saying had because I've been doing some therapy and I'll get to that. And then I have or had the keloid on the back two bullet holes. I call them bullet holes. The two back ones where she did a lipo incision. Okay. Then I had a little bit of keloid in my belly button because it was redone. <laughs> I don't have a keloid at the top of my, can I say anus? <laughs> That's the that's the technical term. But, cause that's where you, she did the lipo to get that V. You see the buttocks? You have a V area. Mm -hmm. Makes it real sexy. I don't have a keloid in the middle of my back, which is where she went in for lipo to get 
the back, you feel me? Like the, the, the upper back, okay? Some of the keloids were a lot smaller and some were thicker, wider than others. It's not a terrible thing. I'm, that's the way I see it. It's not like glaringly obnoxious and terrible and I feel like I, I regret the whole thing. Not at all, in my opinion. But it's enough to be like, dang, if, if I can get this to go away, I would like that, you know? I have been doing FU5 injections, okay? Those things freaking hurt. It feels like she's injecting alcohol into my skin. That's how much it freaking burns, but it's a teeny, 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 teeny needle. And then she's injecting, 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 injecting into several spots of all the keloids. Come and see injections around the areola. Like, the delicacy of it all is just very contemptuous. And, and contemptuous is not even a word. I just made it up because I want you to understand how serious it is. I was shocked to find out that that because the thick skin, which is the keloid, is so thick, when she was injecting some areas, I didn't feel it. I'd be like, oh, did you do that part? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I didn't feel it. it because the skin is so thick. Ah! But there's some parts, when she's injecting, Jai, I'm like, can I get a, a ball to squeeze? This is serious. Burns, little bit of blood comes out, but nothing too tragic. I'm, just, I'm saying this because it's important to understand that after you're off the table and you do your first three months of crazy <laughs> rehab, <laughs> post-op rehab, whatever you want to call it, there's more if you get keloids or any kind of other complications. Would you call this a complication? I don't know. Because again, I'm seeing it half full. I don't, it's not that big of a deal to me. You know, I know she mentioned that I could do, is this a steroid or is this a steroid? She mentioned a different one where it could but it would more than likely lead to hypopigmentation in the areas where it would be injected, meaning looking extremely light, loss of pigment in those areas. And I was like, I don't want that if I can do this other one where this is what it does, it spreads or flattens out the scar, okay? So my perfectly round areolas, yes, get the envisionment going, <laughs> envisionment. My perfectly round areolas are now almost like an oval, you know, and I had to say, self, geez, you know, they used to be a circle. Now it's giving an oval, you know? The donut that was just a little squished. You know, it's giving something like that, but not in a tragic way. I'm being dramatic because that's my thing. Not in a tragic way. Again, I see the glass half full, but my scars were so perfect. I mean, you like cutting a slice of bread, but now it's like flat in certain areas, okay? Because the thickness of the hill, like if this is the keloid and it's round on top, or you know, raised, and that what the FU5 injections do is it flattens it out. So the hill is just like down a little bit. It's nothing like, it's not like now the keloid it is like on my shoulder. No, it's not like that. You see what I'm saying? But it's just not a perfect circle like it used to be, you know? And under the breast, it's flattening. Some parts of it flattened by itself. And then some parts of it definitely, the injections are working on the hips. They're working, you know? And I'm gonna continue once a month until they go down, you know? And if they don't, I guess we do something different. I don't even know. They hurt, they're effective. I'm glad that I can get this kind of treatment to correct or fix these issues because think about it. If I had gone to a different state or country, would I be able to do all this? Doubt it. You're on your own. When you come back, you're on your own, okay? They don't even answer the phone call. They don't even answer your phone call. They don't even know who you are anymore. You are discharged and you are completely dead to them. Whereas I'm grateful that I can just go over there on I-10 and get these treatments once a month and I'm seeing the results and I'm happy. And I've already paid my arm and a leg, I'm gonna say this a million times, I don't pay again to go in for these checkups and treatments. I don't pay again for this, you feel me? Imagine going again out of the state, out of the country, and then needing these follow-ups and then having to pay some kind of copay or whatever, because I didn't use insurance, I paid out of pocket. Some kind of fee every single time, like who has time for that? So very, very important. Honey, the way these tatas was sitting up when I came home from surgery and I was like, I've never seen my breasts like this before. I was excited. I was like, yo, I want them to stay. You feel me? Like I wanted them to stick. Can we? <laughs> I wanted them to be like that. High profile, you know? And when them things started to simmer down, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I mentioned it before, but I noticed that my breasts are not as big as they were before the surgery, okay? They were down, they were loose, they had a lot of skin. And with the breast reduction, it wasn't a reduction though, with breast lift, there was inevitably a reduction, I guess because of the skin. I don't know, I mean, obviously I didn't see what she was doing, but somehow, some way I have, my breasts are smaller, like that's a fact. They're still, a, I think I'm still a D. I, I haven't worn a bra, because I either wear sports bras or, no bras, don't tell my doctor. I don't wear actual bras anymore because why? <laughs> 
does that? <laughs> Not me, you know? Ew. <laughs> I'm just saying, I pay for it. We gotta enjoy, okay? Praise the Lord. So my breasts are smaller and the fullness of joy that I had the first like month or so is gone. It's not bad. It's just not what I saw. Like I was like, oh, I got the high profile. Like, ew, no. It ain't them candy titties, candy burris. It ain't them, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Maybe I should have done an uh, implant, but that's, I don't need that. It's not what I want. It's, it's okay. And yes, well, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I loved seeing myself so pushed up because I was so used to them being like this, you know, like dog ears, okay? That was a, that was a, oh, that was like a dang, you know? Where'd they go? <laughs> They're up though, okay? They're up. They are up and stuck. They just aren't as full on top, you know? And, and that's just the makeup of my body, I guess. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Honey, everything is itchy. Like my stomach itself, because my abdomen is itchy. It's not as bad now, God, but it used to be so itchy and rashy. I don't know if it was dry skin. I don't know what was going on, but it used to be so itchy. Now, what is itchy now more so? The incisions, girl. Oh my goodness, oh we. Sometimes I'll just be sitting here and I'll just, and I mentioned this in a different video, it's still happening. I'll be sitting, walking, doing God knows what, and I'll just have to press myself. I almost want a cold compress. It's that itchy, like so bad. I, oh, and I used to, feel like the more I scratched it, the bigger my keloids would get. But now that I'm getting the scar therapy, I don't even care. I just scratch because, oh, sometimes just the pressing is not enough. It's just not enough. It's so itchy. If you've ever had a surgery of any kind and you obviously your scars will heal, your wounds will heal. Oh my goodness. The itching is insane. It is insane. It is not for the weak at all. Like saying it right now, I'm feeling lightheaded. That's how sometimes it can feel so freaking itchy, okay? That is something, I hope that that dies soon because I'm tired of it, but it's something that I've had to deal with and it just comes out of nowhere sometimes. And along with the itchiness, I've been using Biocornium Scar Gel, which was referred to me from my doctor. Yes, there are other over-the-counter options that I could use, but in order for me to be able to get whatever revision that may or may not be required for me, I've got to follow her instructions, which I'm fine to do, right? So I bought the Biocornium from her and then I just buy it now on Groupon or they have it on Amazon. It's all over the places, girl. And I be blown through them things because I put them on my breast and on my lower abdomen. And that does help with the itching. The days where I forget to put that on, excuse me, Jay, even with it on, I get the itching. How much more when I forget to put it on? <laughs> Please. And what I love about Cornum is that it has an SPF in it, which is very important because you know that the sun can deepen the color of the scars. We don't want that. I want them to be lighter and lower and then eventually I want them to fade away. You feel what I'm saying? So the bicornium is good. And that's another thing too you gotta think about is the extra fees outside of the actual procedure. I mentioned that in a different video, but me continuing to buy this bicornium and, and I also bought a vitamin C product from her that's supposed to help lighten the scars. I forget the name of it. Still, like though, like it was like 200 some dollars. You feel what I'm saying? It just, it all adds up. But you gotta do what's, what's necessary because this is a huge investment. Like you won't just do it and then go put some Vaseline on and go find someone to sit down, not me. No, 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 this cost me a lot of money, okay? We're gonna do this right. Honey, your girl's still swelling, okay? And I have to remind myself, like, before this procedure, how often was I swelling? I did swell. I know I have poor leg circulation, hence why I have varicose veins, hence why I need to make the appointment to get rid of these things because they're irritating me. They're just unsightly. Right now, I don't have any complications as a result of it, praise Jehovah, but they're unsightly. Like, they're annoying. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I still wear my clothes and stuff. They're there, just... Uh, I wonder what it looks like to people. It probably looks like a scar to people because it's dark, the vein is dark, and I can actually feel it, it's bulbous. They're just annoying to look at. So yes, I wanna go and get that procedure, that's a different story, but I still swell in my legs sometimes, ankles, hands sometimes, abdomen, duh. Like even right now, I'm swelling at the top, not the bottom, so I'm a little bit at the bottom, but more so the top. Like the swelling is still happening. I suppose I could wear my skin bodysuit more often, but I was sick and tired of it. I don't wanna always wear that thing. And it's hot outside. Like, I guess summertime, like, who's doing that? You know what I'm saying? I don't need to. The nice thing 
thing is that when I wake up in the morning, I don't have as much swelling. It's just through the day, you feel me? Sitting, what I'm eating, you know, sodium, blah, 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 blah. There's no diet that I'm on at six, seven months, but I'm outside of me just doing keto. But what I'm saying is like, you know, in the beginning, you see the, my playlist, you see that there were times where I was on a no salt diet. This this not too much water diet. Oh my God, like, <laughs> this is crazy, okay? No, you don't have that at this point. I, all right, let me say, I don't have those instructions at this point, but <laughs> yeah, I need to increase my water intake because I do be swelling still. I do be swelling still. I do be swelling still. I still be outside though. I still be rocking what I want to rock, you feel me? But I do be swelling still, that's a fact. And I already mentioned that my abs are getting more and more defined. Even when I look at that picture from Miami back in February compared to now, oh, less swelling, more toning. It's just, it's over. Wait until the dust settles and your girl is 100% healed. Okay, and then I get my body where I want it to be, less body fat, more tone, it's gonna be game over. Right now, you can barely speak to me. How much more that time? <laughs> Call my assistant first and let her give me the message you wanna give to me. So well, that's, what, that's, that's the kind of love we gonna be on. <laughs> I, I am so happy. I'm so confident. It's already obvious, but let's just call it what it is. Like, what? I feel stupendous. I feel fantastic. I feel blessed and highly favored. Praise Jehovah. And I love working out. Working out and being on keto is important, right? This is not like I said, you don't just get off the table and then you look like this, okay? I know that people can do that ab etching stuff. I didn't do that. I literally had abs underneath the fat that were able to be shown in February, because in February I was not working out. I could not, no wait, let me think. Did we work out that? We did work out at that point. Okay, in February I was able to work out. So December and January I wasn't. So there's no way that one or two weeks working out I had abs, there's no way. They were there, they, you just couldn't see them well. <laughs> And then they came out peekaboo, you know what I'm saying? So, so important. And then like I mentioned, no garment required. I wear it on the airplane because I noticed a huge difference when I wore the garment to go to Vegas and when I took it off versus me not wearing a garment to go to church and then getting off the airplane and being like, what? I mean, sometimes it's like, what kind of stomach is this, you know? Mm, it's just like weird. And if you wear something that just cinches you, it'll leave an indent. It's just a thing. So anyway, this is where I am right now at six months. Make sure you watch my playlist on the surgery. You'll learn so much there. There. I went to Dr. Sato here in Houston, S-A-T-O, Erica Sato. I've had a phenomenal experience. I don't regret it. I love what I've done. I love my results thus far and I cannot wait to see how I look at 12 months. If you have any questions, comment below and let me know and I'll answer them for you because I'm an open book. Nothing to share here. I want all of us to look and feel great. And if that means you're gonna get cosmetic surgery, then do what you gotta do. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.